Welcome, everybody. Uh, this was a uh, last minute uh, exercise on uh, Arduino CLI. So, Arduino CLI is uh, a technology preview by Arduino, uh, which basically replaced the uh, Arduino IDE. So, who here uh, has never used the Arduino IDE? Okay. And who here has never used Docker? Okay. Um, so the, um, what I'm going to show, uh, I hope at the end, uh, if the internet connection is, uh, is fine, is how to use GitLab CI. Git, so GitLab CI, uh, um, the original plan was to connect uh, GitLab CI, uh, build the container uh, with the SDK, uh, blink a LED, and uh, package everything, uh, put that into a Docker registry of GitLab, and then uh, tell um, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, connected to the to um, ESP8266 board. Um, that you, yes, you can see here. So I don't know from far if you can see the, the LED blinking. Um, so the typical way. Um, the typical way is to use the Arduino IDE. Uh, one way. Um, so um, the interesting thing is uh, why I use Docker in this in this uh, setup is to be able to do caching. So um, one of the, of the advantage of Docker is it does uh, when you are d developing. Uh, when you try to rebuild your <laughs> Docker image, it uses uh, layers of, of caching. And so um, previously I worked in a company like 10 years ago where I was scripting containers. And when do Docker came out, uh, the Docker file were very similar to the scripts I was uh, doing. One of the disadvantages of the, my approach was if you had to change one comma, it was a five, uh, 45 minutes rebuild. While with Docker, if you, the comma you change is at the end of the Docker file, then it would cache everything and just uh, use the cache uh, way faster. So here I have a simple, uh, I use a simple uh, uh, blink. So I'm not gonna, uh, the code is very simple. Um, so everybody knows that. Um, <coughs> so I took the Arduino CLI project uh, and edit the Docker file. Um, so the I have separated the the, the structure in uh, two layers. So the Arduino CLI is basically a Go application. Um, it's a Go application. So uh, I took the um, took the uh, the examples and basically in the first lines I compiled the Arduino CLI binary as a static, and then uh, in a second step, so this is called uh, in Docker multi-stage multi build. Um, basically, I want to take the Arduino CLI binary and uh, put it in uh, another Alpine layer. Um, so this is, I, I copy the, the Arduino CLI binary uh, into my user bin, and then uh, in order to use the, the support for the uh, uh, Wemos D1, which is an ESP8266, I have to specify uh, CLI config.yaml, which contains the, the, the link to the, when you have to add a new, a new type of board, uh, you have to specify which URL, JSON URL, which will fetch the SDK. Um, and then uh, do uh, an Arduino CLI core update, uh, install the SDK, and then, um, one thing I found uh, during my development is uh, uh, um, that I, I tried to put that part into the second Docker file, uh, but then it was pulling the SDK again, so I just uh, put a, a blink example so that everything is cached, and then uh, in the second example, I, I create a blink too, uh, where I don't have this, uh, this uh, pulling of the SDK anymore. Um, so I measured it was, this whole thing is 500 megabytes. 
um, and it's ghosted on GitHub. So um, if you do github.com slash zubap Arduino CLI, Arduino CLI, um, you will find the project. And uh, there is, I put everything in the Docker, Docker file uh, branch. So feel free to have a look at the code. Uh, so if you do Docker uh, images uh, on my disk, um, you should see that there is an image. Uh, here it's a bit bigger, um, an image called Zubap Arduino CLI. So if you do Docker search, uh, Arduino CLI should find a Zubab image, which is 1.2 one, one uh, one uh, gigabyte. Um, so what I have prepared here is uh, so the actual, the actual uh, uh, maybe I can talk about uh, just the, the standalone. Um, <coughs> Here I've installed the Arduino CLI on my laptop, not inside Docker. Um, so here, if I have, um, here I'm blinking a LED uh, every 10 seconds. So this is 10,000 milliseconds, so 10 seconds. Um, okay. And I made a small script that basically uh, calls the Arduino CLI compiles everything and then do a flash over my dev TTY USB zero here. Uh, maybe I can zoom a bit. Uh, so it, it throws this error but it basically continues. So now it's flashing for people who are familiar with uh, the Arduino. So now it should blink uh, every 10 seconds, if everything is fine, yeah. So that's, the flash has been successful. Um, so that was basically, um, yeah, basically the, I listed the board, I created a new sketch. It's gonna create a directory in the home Arduino Blink2, and I copy my Blink2.ino file over there. Uh, then it does a compile where I have to specify my V1, my Wemos D1 mini board uh, with the code I want to compile, and then it does the upload. Um, so I did a Docker file. So before I showed the Arduino CLI outside of Docker, now I want to use everything in Docker because my goal is to put everything into GitLab and GitLab has standard, uh, let's say, container flow for deploying containers. Um, so from the SDK, which I called Arduino CLI, uh, there's a small bug which I reported where you have to fix a Unix user called root. I copy this uh, Blink2 to, uh, here it's slash root Arduino Blink2, Blink2.ino. And then I launch the compilation. And so if everybody is familiar with the entry point, is the entry point when I do Docker run uh, the name of the image, then it should uh, by default take this command and execute it. So when I will do Docker run my Blink2 image, then it will do the flashing. And inside its image, the binaries will be in the image. So this is something where it can be transported, like you give it to someone, you just say, hey, take this image, and it will, uh, the person can just run the image and have the same uh, flashing uh, uh, result. Okay. Um, so here I made another uh, small shell script, which is build, build and run. So the build is just doing a Docker build. Um, and I call the image uh, Blink2. And when the run is just doing a uh, Docker run. So to, in order to access the serial port, I need to be in privilege mode. So uh, this kind of root access and the uh, image name. And I have another script which is called uh, build and run, which is basically getting the time of the build, getting the time of the run. Um, 
So if I modify my blink to and put it to five seconds, um, it's going to copy the INO file, uh, do the compilation. Um, so depending on the, sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's not. Okay. Uh, normally there should be a time somewhere. Yeah. So 25 seconds to execute. And then it's going to try to flash it sometimes. Sometimes it's fast. Uh, I've been to situations where it takes 45 seconds to flash. Um, but it basically does the same as the previous example, but everything in Docker. Okay, fine. So we have, for the bill it took 25, and for the run it took 25, so it was like 15, 50 seconds. Uh, so the next step is to put that uh, everything in uh, GitLab. So GitLab, since there was the Microsoft uh, acquisition of GitHub, uh, every lot of people looked at, at GitLab.com. The advantage of GitLab is they have this uh, CI, GitLab CI, which Git GitHub still doesn't have, where you have to use uh, external service like Travis. Um, and it's also the hosted version is the enterprise version, but you can also run the community edition on your, let's say, on-premise on your laptop. Uh, so here I used the, the let's say, the hosted uh, free uh, version. And uh, what I did was, uh, so you, you have to, next to the Docker file, you need to have, where is it? Uh, you need to have a .gitlab CI YAML file. And uh, when you go into the web interface of uh, GitLab CI, you, create, you say new file, and then you can choose .gitlab.yaml, and you have pre-configured template. I just took the Docker file, which is the, the standard one, and modified it a bit, so the first ones are the same as the template. And then uh, I tried to use a Raspberry Pi and the ESP as a standalone. Uh, my first attempt was to uh, send this uh, slash dev TTY USB 0 to a server on the internet where I could run uh, a, a small Kubernetes cluster. And uh, for that, I use Sertunet, which is a serial to network, serial to TCP uh, program. And uh, I could successfully uh, send it and create a slash dev TTY 0 on my server with SOCAD that creates a virtual, a virtual uh, dev entry. But unfortunately, when I was using the Arduino CLI upload, uh, it was throwing some weird errors. So might be that I misconfigured somewhere some parameter in Certunet. So I didn't uh, manage to get that working. So I rolled back to, uh, to a design. Maybe I can show here in the diagram where uh, I used the GitLab. Uh, which is connected to runner. So uh, one of the issue, one thing I wanted to have was the caching because uh, on my laptop it was uh, cached. And um, the GitLab has by default shared runners. So you have eight runners available where it sh shoots the, the build. Um, but they have the policy to not do any caching because they, for security reasons, they don't want to do any cache. But so I try to install a small digital ocean machine uh, with one gig of RAM and uh, put the runner over there to try to have this caching mechanism of Docker, uh, but I didn't succeed. So uh, it means that the time, the, the, the time of the CI will increase because it's, it doesn't u do use the cache, so it's pulling one gig of the SDK for each build. But that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be a room for improvement for the near future. Uh, they provide GitLab compared to the uh, community edition. They provide the Docker registry built in. So in, on the right side of your GitLab, you see a registry entry. And the, I, I, pl I try to put a, a small Kubernetes cluster, whether it's Minikube or uh, 
uh, KS3S, which is a stripped down version of Kubernetes where they removed lots of features uh, on my laptop, but it was not that stable. So at the end, I said, okay, I do an SSH tunnel to my laptop, which is connected to the uh, ESP. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's let's have a look at the the GitLab YAML again. Um, so here at the end, in uh, in GitLab CI, uh, in the in the settings of the project, you can put some uh, environment variables, and over there I put a SSH private key. Um, so when you build, you can get these environment variables and redirect to an SSH key file. Uh, fix the permissions, and then uh, the GitLab runner is gonna SSH to some host called zubab.servio.net. So servio.net is a it's a free, let's say, uh, free service uh, with Linux binaries and everything, just using simple SSH. Um, but server side, they have uh, they have provided the binaries, but not the source code. Um, so that is used. That is used here in uh, my uh, tunnel, tunnel.sh. So tunnel.sh is doing just a uh, uh, SSH uh, remote port forwarding. So um, here I've said, yeah, I will try to modify the the code. So if I go on files. Uh, I have my blink.ino and I will put the delay to two seconds. Two seconds. And there I calculated that it takes uh, roughly three minutes. So I triggered the CI CD pipeline. Um, so the pipeline itself is split in two phases, there's the build of the Docker image, and then there's the deploy. The deploy is basically uh, SSHing to my machine and say, hey, pull this image to be the last one, and then flush it. Um, so the build is running, it's uh, pulling the SDK. So uh, maybe I can talk uh, while it's building. Normally it should take three minutes. Um, I can talk a bit about the GitLab, about what the, which problem, other problems or which other improvements I want to make. Um, so I tried to, I made some simple YAML files. Uh, so with uh, Minikube, there is Minikube which spawns a VM. And I was looking for how to uh, take this slash dev USB uh, TTY, uh, TTY USB zero on the host and put it inside the Minikube VM, but I couldn't find out. Uh, Minikube has also a VM driver none, which is basically spawning communities cluster without any virtualization. So it's, uh, if you have a Docker running, it's just gonna spawn a, a list of uh, uh, Docker containers. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I s on that one, I don't think I could see the slash dev uh, TTY USB zero. So I tried another one, which is called Kind, uh, which is Kubernetes in Docker. And there, uh, it basically spawned one container. And on that container, I could see the slash dev TTY USB zero from the host. And when I would spawn a container in privilege mode, I could see also the slash, slash dev uh, TTY zero. But when I run, um, and here I can show maybe the um, the YAML file for yeah for the flashing, basically saying I spawn me a container with that image. Then uh, my cluster uh, blew up, so uh, still have to debug it. But basically the idea is to have uh, GitLab CI connected to Kubernetes cluster, whether it's local or in the cloud, and either send the serial port to there or having directly the communities cluster running next to the machine where the hardware is. 
uh, in the past I've done some similar thing with OpenWRT. Uh, so uh, taking the, the 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 building the whole thing, put it into a big uh, Docker image. Um, the SDK right now seems to be fixed. So if you want to do a basic uh, package for OpenWRT, you could use the same approach, which is to have the SDK in the upper layer and uh, have the your code, which is the, the package or the, the code you want to build for OpenWRT in the second uh, layer. And uh, yeah, nothing prevents to, to use uh, GitLab CI as well. Um, so where is it now? It's still running for two minutes. So the first part has succeeded. Uh, and the deploy has succeeded as well. So now I said it was how many seconds? Two seconds? So yeah, now it's two seconds. So um, you could see in the CI that it has been flashed correctly. That the pipeline says um, passed. If I can zoom in, oh yeah, here. And it took uh, it took three min uh, three minutes three minutes to to complete. So this is definitely uh, definitely definitely way longer than the fifty seconds we had I had on my laptop because it has to pull the the one dot gig uh, each time. So it takes uh, I think I measured it takes. Uh, 50, 50 seconds to download this, uh, so you can remove it. But the advantage is when when you does the the pool in the deploy uh, in the deploy part when it did the pool um, So you can see that here it said uh, all the this is on my laptop, huh? It says all the layers already exist and basically downloaded just the few layers which corresponds to the compile part um, on the, basically the last step of the process, but the rest was already cached, so it, it, gained, it gained a lot of uh, time. Uh, what else? Um, Yeah, so that I already showed. Uh, yes, so there is also one issue is um, I tried to use GitLab CI, including for the SDK, but I couldn't figure out um, how to to have the integration with both. Um, so for uh, for your information, the Docker Hub is not integrated with GitLab. So you can in in Docker Hub if you log in, you can quickly create a build if it's hosted on GitHub. But if it's hosted on GitLab, you can't. Uh, okay. Some other ideas. Uh, I have tested another board for uh, the Blue Pill, which is an STM32 one euro fifty board. Uh, much more powerful than the standard Arduino, and uh, they have um, they have some kind of uh, the co the project is called Dab Boot, and uh, it's a web interface wh which is using Web USB, and you can reflash directly if your browser allows it. It uh, you give the permission, and it can reflash directly the your USB device. Um, so I also found another uh, web ID called G G5 GS or something like this. Uh, used by processing where you could have uh, let's say a better ID and maybe a direct connection to your uh, uh, USB device. This has also some security implications but uh, yeah have uh, the standard Arduino ID git support so that if you make uh, some changes you say commit and then it, it push to GitLab and then triggers the pipeline. Um, yeah, one option would be also to take the ino file and just send it to the container and, and so that you would just wait and uh, take it on the fly and build it. But it doesn't fit with the, the mantra that everything is container and reproducible. Um, yeah, I also used another project called G-Link, which is uh, taking ESP and use it as a serial to TCP uh, a bridge. And uh, the idea would be to take uh, a second ESP, hook it there, 
send it to uh, um, send it to a server, a console server, and then uh, from there uh, do the flashing. Uh, another idea is to integrate the over-the-air update for the ESP. So the ESP has Wi-Fi, so you could uh, flash the thing uh, uh, over the Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so in the case of Raspberry Pi, uh, use a QMU wrapper. So the binaries, all the containers here are AMD64, but if you want to run them on the Raspberry Pi, you might look at QMU wrapper. Um, and that's basically it. So uh, if you have any questions. Yes. One of the concepts of the CI CD is being able to test what you are doing. Yes. In your case, I see you are preparing, you are or flushing, but how do you control the, how do you control the feedback loop to yeah. know what your push is correct? OK. So uh, for this example, it's the blink. But I've, I'd, I've, I've, uh, in the, if you look at the Git history, they have added uh, serial messages saying I blink at that speed. And so if you would a uh, 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 third uh, test step, you would just uh, check the serial console if you see those messages, for example. Are there any virtual images where you have an Arduino that's simply running on QEMU or some virtualization so that you could, instead of Flashing something into real hardware, just test it on an emulation? Uh, that I don't know. Hmm? Emulation of the MCU? Yeah. yeah. I, it probably exists, but I, I don't know by heart. I don't know. Well, thank you. Yeah.